Look at that. Beautiful Lake Coeur d'Alene during the winter time. Now, for a lot of people that are looking at moving to Idaho, they look at the wildlife, they look at the nature, they look at the small town and they go, yes, yes, this is what I want. I want to get out of this city. I want that. But if you've never lived in a place like North Idaho, and you've never gone through a winter like we have here in North Idaho, there are some things you don't know that could seriously make you regret living here. My name is Trent and I'm the guy on the right sitting in beautiful Lake Coeur d'Alene in the winter time. Why am I doing that you ask? Well, you're just gonna have to watch this video to find out. Welcome to another episode of Living Life in North Idaho, where we discuss living life in North Idaho, all the aspects, eating, working, playing, buying real estate, everything you need to know to decide if Idaho is the right place for you. Now, if you've never been on YouTube ever, you might not know that you need to hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell so that when I do come out with another video, you'll get notified. Otherwise, you're gonna watch me, you're gonna go, that was great, and you're never gonna see me again, and I'll be very sad about that. So hit the subscribe button. And if you are serious about getting moved to Idaho, reach out to me personally at the phone number or email address listed below. Day, nights, weekends, it does not matter. Love helping people figure out if Idaho is the right place for them, and if it is, helping them get here. And I wanna start this video by saying Idaho is an absolutely amazing place to live, but it is not for everyone. There's a lot of people right now in the country looking for a new state to call home. And while I think Idaho is one of the greatest states in the union, there are some things that do make it a little bit difficult to live here. So you gotta have some gumption and you gotta have some knowledge, which is what I'm here to share with you today. Now you might have heard me say in other videos, most years, winters here are very, very mild. It doesn't take much. You don't even really need to have a snow thrower. Although if you have a sore back like me, it's a great thing to have. But this year, this is the year, the unicorn year that we have once every 10 years where the snow just keeps coming. It doesn't seem to stop. The temperatures stay low so it sticks around and it is just a winter Wonderland. Now, as beautiful as it is, it is also dangerous. And if you don't have the knowledge, if you don't have the gumption to stick it out, it can make living here very, very miserable. So let's get started. The first thing is make sure your vehicle is prepped, prepared with certain items. During the winter, you will always find certain items in my vehicle. That is a blanket that is an emergency repair kit or emergency roadside assistance kit, jumper cables, flares, things of that nature. I will always have water and I will have a jacket and a hat in my truck. Now, explaining this to you, you're thinking, okay, why, why do I need all that stuff? Because Idaho is so spread out that sometimes you gotta be driving and if you happen to have a breakdown, you go off into a ditch, and your car dies, imagine it being 30 degrees outside and you didn't bring a very warm jacket because you think, well, I'm just driving there and I'm gonna get out and just go right into where I need to be. It's not gonna be that bad. Well, within 20 minutes of your vehicle being off, the temperatures can drop to the same temperature that it is outside. Now, I know for most people, being in 30 degree temperatures for 20, 30 minutes can be sometimes life threatening. At the very least, it's not comfortable. So these things do happen and you want to make sure that you're prepared for that. It's also really nice that if you come across a vehicle that has slid off the road and you see somebody who is not from here and they don't have the stuff in their car that prepared them for a situation like this, that you have something that you can offer them. It's also really good to have a first aid kit because during the winter time, it's cold 
it's icy. Accidents do happen a lot more often, so it's good to have stuff to make you prepared for any situation. And you can go to your local Costco and get all of this stuff, and it's pretty cheap. Go to your local Costco, spend the $100 to make sure you are fully prepped for if anything happens. Next, let's talk about the equipment on your vehicle. Now, if you don't know this, air expands in heat. And guess what it does during the cold? It contracts. Yes, basic science, probably fifth grade or whatever. So in really cold temperatures, the PSI in your tires can drop seven, eight, nine pounds per square inch. That means that you are gonna be feeling a lot of slop while you're driving. There are times where you want to deflate your tires. Say you're in really thick snow and you're spinning, sometimes having a little bit of extra tread can be good, but overall you wanna make sure your tires are filled up. Now, one way to solve this problem is you can go to Costco and they will fill your tires with nitrogen. It does cost more, but nitrogen does not react as much to temperature, so you don't have to worry about it going up and down so much. But number one, make sure your PSI is right in your tires. Make sure you're rotating your tires. If you haven't rotated your tires in a while, that means the front is gonna have less tread than the back, which is not always a great thing because when you go to make that turn, you're just gonna keep sliding and that's no good. More on that later. The next thing you wanna check is make sure that you have washer fluid. Now I know this might seem like, oh, well, I mean, no big deal. It's a huge deal, trust me. There have been plenty of times where I'm coming back from Schweitzer or just on a long drive and I run out of windshield wiper fluid. And guess what? All the cars in front of me are throwing that dirty mud water up onto the windshield and pretty soon I can't see through it. I've literally, when I was younger, not as responsible as I am now, having to take a water bottle, freezing temperatures, cause you're driving 50 miles an hour and the wind chill is just hitting your fingertips and you're dumping water on your windshield to be able to wipe it. It's a really good idea, just take your car into a Jiffy Loop or your dealership and go, hey, can you just go through everything, make sure that I'm good to go for the winter. They'll go through, top everything off, check everything, make sure you're good to go. And make sure that you do get to the mechanics or the tire shops early. Don't wait for the first snowfall. Trust me, it will be hours, weeks to be able to get in. Always try to get in right when the temperature starts to drop. Just call them, schedule an appointment, that way you're not coming in and going, hey, I need to get those winter tires. And they're going, yeah, what do you want us to do? We have a long line of cars. You suck at planning things. So <laughs> they're not gonna respond very well at you being really upset and uppity. Just do your best, set a reminder when winter hits, when it starts to get cold, take your car and get it checked out and get the right tires put on. And I can't recommend this enough. Go and get remote start for your vehicle. I've had vehicles without it and I, once I got it, I've never gone back. That's like the first thing I ask. Does this vehicle have remote start? Because if it doesn't, I get it put on. There are times, I mean, even if you're just going into the gym or going to the mall or going and getting some food, it is so nice to just hit that button, start up your vehicle. Some of the newer vehicles actually have it on the app where you can do it from pretty much anywhere in the world you can start your car. It's just so nice to be able to get in, especially if you have seat warmers, those things are going, you get in, it's nice and toasty, trust me. You're gonna love it. Leave a comment in the comment section if this is something you've experienced because I promise you it's gonna be all positive things. I don't know anybody who goes, oh, I hate that. No, it's wonderful. And the last thing I gotta recommend for having in your vehicle for equipment is a really good ice scraper. Keep it in your vehicle. You never know when the, the temperature is gonna drop. Maybe it starts raining, temperature drops. Now you have a sheet of ice over your windshield. And a lot of people, if they're not from here and they're not very bright, they'll go and grab some hot water and throw it on their windshield. And guess what? One, that doesn't really solve the problem. Two, you're gonna be buying yourself a new windshield because guess what happens with glass that heats up too quickly? It cracks. So just don't do that. Go spend five bucks, get a good ice scraper. I do like mine that I can slide my hand in and snow doesn't get on there. Unfortunately, my truck is too tall, so I end up having to use a broom most of the time. But ice scraper, highly recommended. 
All right, now that we've gone through the vehicle, you've gotten the right equipment, you've got it checked out, it's solid, you are ready to hit the road. Next, we need to pay attention to is driving conditions. If you've never lived in a place like North Idaho, there are a lot of different road conditions that you're not gonna know about. You need to do some research and overall, you need to just go out and drive in it, drive slow and figure out what it looks like and what it feels like because each one is gonna require different driving habits and techniques. The most dangerous one that I can tell you about, I'm gonna share at the end so I make sure you watch the rest of this. But the first one we're gonna talk about is the slush. Slush is what happens when it snows and then it warms up and now you've got this really heavy, like slushy crap. And the reason this stuff is so nasty is one, if you don't have a big vehicle, you have maybe just a midsize or a sedan, tires will get basically get sucked in to the slush. You'll be driving along and all of a sudden the slush will just grab your tire, will start turning the wheel and you'll start going in to the ditch. It's horrifying. The easiest thing to do is just press on the gas a little bit and turn the wheel slightly in the direction you wanna go. This will work with all wheel drive and front wheel drive vehicles. Rear wheel drive, you're SOL. You shouldn't even be driving that right now. What are you doing? Go get an all wheel drive vehicle. But overall, this technique does work for the most part. You just wanna make sure that you're driving slow enough because naturally, if you're already driving too fast, you're not gonna to wanna to hit that gas. You're gonna to wanna to hit the brakes. That doesn't help. When you lock up those front brakes, you're just gonna keep going in the direction that you were going before. So just tap on the gas a little bit, turn slightly, you should be able to get out of it. Now to me, one of the most dangerous times, and I just try to stay off the road if I can, the first snowfall. This is always a crazy crap show out there because you, you will see vehicles off the side of the road. And it's just like a little bit of snow, but it's all of the people that have never driven in snow. They've never driven in conditions like this. They have no idea what to expect. They're not slowing down. They haven't gotten their snow tires on. So it is just a nightmare out there. Now, I personally love it because I go, yes, I've been doing this for 30 years, so I'm totally used to driving in snow, and it can be kind of fun when you have the right vehicle. But this is the time that you're gonna see people flying through stoplights and stop signs. They're going to be going off the road. So overall, I'm not worried about myself, I'm worried about the other driver. That first snow is a doozy, just do what you can, stay off the roads. If you can't, just take it slow, take the back roads, just, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but you just need to know, don't go out during that first snow. That's gonna be the worst time. And the absolute scariest thing out there, now if you've taken all the recommendations that I've said, all wheel drive, four wheel drive vehicle, snow tires, you should be fine. But if you didn't and you hit this stuff, it is going to be very scary if it ever happens. Black ice. Now, why black ice is so scary is it's incredibly slick, it completely blends in with the road, and it's where you least expect it. So, for example, driving up the 4th of July pass, it can be a clear, sunny day, temperatures are nice, but in the areas that it's shaded, you can have black ice and you can slide off of the road. It's very, very scary stuff. Anytime that there's a potential for black ice, I just tell people, slow down, just don't go as fast as you can. Just look shiny on the road. So it looks like the road's a little bit wet, but it's actually ice. So try to keep an eye out for it. I always suggest to people, hit the brakes 100, 200 feet before your stop. See what it's like. If you hit those brakes and you don't slow down at all, just start tapping those brakes. I will usually come to just a slow coast for the last 30 feet rolling up to the stop sign if I think there's potential for me to slide through it. Now, if you're feeling overwhelmed from all of these suggestions, I promise you, if you just go out into a parking lot during the first snow and start seeing what your vehicle can do, turning, seeing if you can spin out, 
one, it's a lot of fun. Two, you'll find out how your vehicle responds and you'll start getting used to it. And I promise you, once you get used to it, it actually is a lot of fun. It really shows you like, oh, hey, yeah, I did buy this all wheel drive for a reason and this is it. So that investment that you made does pay off. Now, I'm not your dad and I can't tell you what to do, but if you listen to me on this, I promise you are way more likely to avoid an accident than if you don't. Stay off of technology. I'm not just talking about your phone. Of course, being on your phone during a snowstorm or when it's icy out is just idiotic, but really don't use the technology that's in your car, like the Lane Keep Assist, where it helps you stay in the lane, or the adaptive con cruise control or cruise control. Just don't use it. Those usually rely on cameras. And most of the time, those cameras are gonna be covered up with mud or ice, but even if they aren't, they're not made to work during icy conditions. You are way more likely to slide out if you have cruise control on because it's going to start sliding those tires and it doesn't always know what to do. Rely on your old school instincts. Just pay attention, have your head on a swivel and you'll do fine. And the last thing when it comes to driving, just make sure that you add plenty of extra time when you're going out, especially if you're new to this, add 20 minutes to your trip. Worst thing that happens is you get there early and you have time to go grab a hot coffee or a tea. But overall, you do not want to be in a rush. That's how the worst accidents happen. In fact, that's how most of the accidents happen. People are in a rush, they didn't set out enough time, and they just go, 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 thinking, oh, my, my car can handle it, especially if they have a lifted truck or an SUV four-wheel drive doesn't matter. You still can't turn or stop any better with that technology. So just plan ahead, plan on it taking longer, and I promise you will learn to love driving in the wintertime. Now this last part about getting through winter happy, healthy, and alive here in Idaho is to make sure that the mental health is in focus, that you're paying attention. I just talked to somebody who's been here for 15 months and when his wife walked away, he told me, he goes, yeah, I've actually really been struggling with this winter. I'd never lived in a place like this. I just feel really unmotivated and I'm feeling ashamed. I just don't feel like doing anything. I don't feel like myself. And that's a hard place to be. Part of dealing with depression and anxiety is that when it does hit you, you don't have the motivation or the creativity to go out and fix it. So you just end up feeling bad about yourself. So that's why I make these recommendations to help people avoid even getting there. It's so much easier to stay out of depression and anxiety than to get out of anxiety and depression. And the reason this is so serious to me is I myself have had struggles living here for 30 years. Winners really started to affect me. I didn't know why. A few years ago, I lost some people that were really close to me that were struggling with mental health issues and they didn't open up to people. They didn't know how to fix it. So that's why I make these recommendations because not only will it keep you from feeling depressed and anxious, but it actually will enhance your life. You'll have more energy, more focus, more drive, more creativity, and isn't that what we need right now in this country is more people feeling good and being happy and excited and hopeful about the future? Anyway, enough about that. Here are the steps to making sure that you're keeping mental health focus in the forefront and that you're making sure that you're staying happy, healthy, and alive during the wintertime. Number one, have a positive routine. It is 4.15 right now and it is really dark outside. So that can really start to wear on you. So having a positive routine, like games that you play with your friends, your family, or your kids, you go out to eat, you go see movies, you're going and doing things, you have a routine set because it's really, really easy to just go, ah, there's a new show on Netflix, let's just, let's just binge watch some shows. That catches up to you really quick here. So you need to have a routine, you need to stay active, have a group that you're a part of. There's tons of churches up here, there's tons of Facebook groups that go out and do activities. It's just really, really important to have a routine that even if you don't feel like following it, you're following it because it gets you out of your rut. It gets you out of just sitting at home doing nothing. Number two, and I'm a huge proponent of this, 
exercise. Now I know a lot of people here in America go, yeah, that's a four letter word, Trent. Not only because we don't like exercise, but we're not good at spelling. <laughs> but exercise is huge, especially during the winter. Cause guess what? You might need to shovel some snow. Even if you do get a snowblower, you're still gonna have to clear off some of that uh, snow on the patio or on the steps. The snow guys will come by, the snow plows, and they'll build a big berm right in front of your driveway. And unless you get a real beefy snowblower, you sometimes have to shovel that yourself. So if you're not exercising, you're way more likely to blow out your back. But overall, exercise releases the endorphins. It also makes your spouse a lot more attracted to you. Come on, can we be honest about this? Of course they're more attracted to you. You're in shape, you're looking good. So definitely get out there and exercise. I've always recommended Planet Fitness. So definitely look at that. Number three, and I have mentioned this in several videos, you've got to supplement your vitamins, especially vitamin D. Now I know that vitamins and supplements are kind of fringe science for some people. They think, oh, that's not real. And believe me, there's some supplements out there that I, I don't think they do anything. But vitamin D across the medical board is agreed upon that it is super important to supplement your vitamin D when you live in an area where it gets dark really early and you don't have a ton of sunshine. Even doubling up the daily values when it is really, really short days is a good idea. It'll keep your immune system up. It will keep you feeling happier and healthier. So, and it's really, really cheap. In fact, I'll provide a link of the stuff that I take on uh, the description. So if you don't know what to get, just go there. It's on Amazon. I think it's like 20 bucks for a month for this stuff. And it's really good quality. All right, number four, and thank you for sticking with me, guys. We're almost done here. Number four is your mental focus. Everybody has to figure out how to keep their mental focus sharp, but I promise you, if you do this, it's going to help pass the time on some of these darker days. Mental focus can slip really easily when it's gray and dark outside and you're sitting at home a lot. You really need to have something like crossword puzzles, yoga, meditation, something to help keep your mental focus on point and keeping you focused on the good things. It's really easy when things are cold and you don't wanna go outside and you start complaining, and especially with inflation and gas prices, there's so much to complain about. But if you keep your mental focus, it'll keep you happier. You can focus on what's important and not what the media is telling you to focus on, which is all just negative stuff, hopelessness, all that great stuff that we can't seem to not be addicted to. It's so addicting. And lastly, I told you at the beginning of the video, I would explain why I was sitting in that lake. Going for a lake dip was to me the most insane, idiotic thing that anyone could possibly do. I absolutely thought anybody who was doing like the polar plunge was just an idiot. It's painful. It's uncomfortable. Why would you do that? But a couple of years ago, my brother introduced me to the Wim Hof Method. It's not only a breathing technique, but also getting into ice water. And since I started doing that, that has completely reset my life. Anytime I'm starting to feel sorry for myself, starting to focus on the wrong thing, or I'm stressed out, or even if I have inflammation and my body's hurting, I go into that water from anywhere from six to 15 minutes and I sit and I breathe and I meditate and I get out feeling like a freaking king, man. I don't know what it is. It's absolute insanity. I don't tell anyone that they need to go and do this. I just let them know this is what this does for me. I know I'm insane, but give it a shot if you've got what it takes. In fact, just recently, all of my kids, including my wife, have gone out with me and either done the polar bath at Heat Proxia or they've gotten in the lake with me. And they say it, I mean, they, they're usually only doing about 60 seconds, but they go, no, that definitely made me feel more awake. There's been studies that show that it increases your endorphins by like 250%. I mean, it's really, really good. I've never done it and regretted it. I'll say that. It's always difficult to talk myself into doing it, but it really, really helps. So if all this stuff doesn't seem to work, you found that you're here, your whole family loves it, but you're really struggling, go get in that lake. I mean, there's plenty of them. It is incredibly gorgeous because nobody's out there, obviously. There's no boats. So it's just you and nature and the 
bitter cold. <laughs> but I promise you, if you learn how to do like the, the Wim Hof breathing technique and you just commit to being out there, just even just get in there for 30 seconds, just to commit to 30 seconds and see if you can go longer after that. But anybody who gets in there for any amount of time, I applaud you. It's a good job doing it because everything in our body says, don't do that, you're gonna die. I'm still alive. I've been doing it for two years. You'll be fine. Guys, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Leave me a comment in the comments section if you found this helpful and make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so every time I come out with a new video, you get notified. But most importantly, if you are serious about getting moved here or you just have questions about what it's like really living here, reach out with a phone no number, reach out with a phone call, text or email at the phone number or email address listed below. I do talk to everybody personally. I love helping people figure out if this is the right place for them to live. And until the next one, I will see you later.